All right. Hi, everybody out there. I'm Barbara Seidenek, the director of the Homeopathy School. And I'm very happy to have Jürgen back for a seminar with us. He's been teaching for us here in Colorado in the past and um, had, knew, knew the school or knows the school very well. Uh, Jürgen and I have some information that we connected over originally a long time ago, and he will go into that later. And it has to do with approving of a particular remedy that was done at the school. So um, I think I just give it over to Jürgen. Okay, thank you, Barbara. So I hope everybody can hear me well. Just put your thumb up or... Okay, fantastic, good. So yeah, when I browse through the participants, I'm very happy to see uh, three friends where, uh, which I know very well from uh, teaching in South Africa. So welcome to South Africa as well, and welcome to the, all the Americans. This is very um, great for me, and I hope I can share some things new today with you. And um, yeah, so my topic I chose for today is the power of homeopathy in acute conditions and um, of course we could also go through or we could call it acute or we could call it, uh, call it a crisis or topics around corona but uh, don't worry I won't share corona cases here I'm just um, going through some other things I have uh, observed recently and the first case I want to share with you is also a case which came up uh, in my collaboration from my collaboration with um, the midwives where I'm working here in my my clinic and um, yeah so I will start and um, if anything or especially at the end my last case I will share about three cases and the last case uh, you should definitely see because then Barbara can also uh, tell us something about the remedy um, which is connected also to the school in Colorado. All right, so um, yeah, what I like to share are different pathologies and my experience is when we treat acute conditions, um, of course the approach should always be the same, like uh, we make ourselves completely clear, completely empty, and uh, focus on what the client is talking about. And when he starts talking, we also observe um, energy. Yeah? So we, we see energy patterns, we see um, body gesture, hand gesture, and uh, yeah, so you will see it's important for the first case because sometimes, especially in acute conditions, we only have rare information we only have a few uh, symptoms and then we have to find a decision quickly because it's acute it's threatening and, and so on so one uh, um, can you see the full screen yeah i think you can huh? there's nothing covering it okay so in aphorism 152 in the organon that's the one which is so important before 153, which is talking about the rare, um, the pe peculiar symptoms. So this one is very important, number 152. The worst of the acute disease is of so much, the more numerous and striking symptoms is it generally composed. But with so much, the more certainly may a suitable remedy for for it to be found if there be a sufficient number of medicines known with respect to their positive action to choose from so i highlighted already the text of course now the worse the acute condition is the numerous the more numerous and striking symptoms we can observe and this is for me the gift in treating acute conditions where we can observe and if we listen careful, if we open the space, we can observe striking symptoms. And that part, now, if there are, now, um, 
uh, a sufficient number of remedies known, I would rewrite that now. I mean, this is the sixth edition of Hahnemann's Organon. I would rewrite it today and say, if we are still able to have a good overview about our sources, about our Materia Medica, because we are not suffering from not enough remedy, we might even suffer a little bit from too many remedies. Yeah, and especially in acute conditions. I appreciate so much the old knowledge we have, the old Materia Medica, the, the clinical experience over 200 years we have and, and can look back to. You will see that also in the first case here. Among the lists of symptoms of many medicines, it will not be difficult to find one from whose separate disease elements an antitype um, of curative artificial disease very like the totality of the symptoms of the natural disease may be constructed and such a medicine is the desired remedy. So now we have to look for the peculiar symptoms and in acute conditions we get more striking symptoms. That is basically what the message is. All right. So in my first case um, I like to write to you it's a woman and she you know this is often the reality here in our practice that uh, the midwives we work together also now for more than 20 21 years here they come and say and it was and this uh, it was renata my uh, one of the midwives she said jürgen please have a look at that woman she has uh, constantly these severe problems with her um, a candida infection, the, the ductal thrush in the milk ducts, yeah, and she's trying to breastfeed, but she has so much pain and she's so desperate. And she can only make it if she constantly takes her allopathic drug, which is, we, we will see that now, which has a lot of side effects, but as soon as she tries to stop it, even for one day, it's coming back. And so when I first saw this woman, it's her third child now, she, um, I have to minimize this here a little bit, sorry. Okay, so, um, it's better. So her spontaneous report, I always had problems with breastfeeding always had problems with breastfeeding means for me the first line is already aha it's a repetitive issue so we we might already be in more like just the acute picture okay. so when i had my first child it was in 2013 seven years i had extremely bloody warts and too little milk so her nipples were completely bloody with the second, uh, second child, I also had nursing problems, but now it's even worse. So there is a re repeating issue, and the, f the first striking symptom for me was that she said, now from breastfeeding, my daughter totally massacred me from breast, so like a massacre. She uses that word of a massacre, yeah, uh, from breastfeeding. There was also other stressful circumstances, enormous stress, moving house, and just uh, before birth, they, they, they moved to, to their new house. So stress and, and the way she was talking about it was very um, yeah, animative and very vivid. Yeah? So that was my first observation. And we will see later in the second case, which has a... Also an issue, it's, it's uh, another case with breastfeeding issues, but totally different energy. So, okay, so what else do we get out here? Um, we tried many things, but I couldn't tolerate the pain. Um, sorry. Okay, couldn't tolerate the pain and burning anymore. Pain and burning. I'm now on permanent medication, taking fluconazole. This is an anti-mucotic um, allopathic uh, medicine she's taking every day. 
And the midwife, which is Renata, is quite concerned because of the long-term side effects. Each time I try to stop this medication, there is itching and burning, and it's so intense. So itching and burning are somehow the key, key words I hear so far, and the intensity. Yeah? And in the milk ducts, uh, there starts a uh, at first a slight burning and then a kind of eczema appears on the wards and then they become shiny, glossy and they get cracked. So this is always the pattern and that is so painful and I don't know if I wrote it down here but I remember, I remember it very uh, clearly. She said um, when it was so bad I couldn't even I couldn't even tell the symptoms clearly to the gynecologist. She just went there and said, give me, give me something. I need to do something. I could, she couldn't really explain it. It was so bad. Okay. So what else? It makes me feel exhausted and tired and my back is constantly hurting. Uh, she gives a little bit of background information. In 2017, there was this, uh, 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 suspicion of multiple sclerosis, so they thought there's a kind of neurological issue uh, because I had numbness in my legs, but they couldn't confirm it. And then she said, I'm a perfectionist and tend to put myself under enormous pressure. So she's perfectionist, she's under pressure. And then she says about her energy, yeah, I get up in the morning and over the day I exhaust myself. How much can I do today? I like to do as much as possible. I love to work and I need this adrenaline rush. And I thought, oh, wow, what, what some substance is this? Yeah, What can that be? Um, there's something in the chat, but I will ignore that in a moment. Okay. I get this flow of ideas, she says. Having my job, building a house, being on all fronts simultaneously. And this is what somehow, sometimes there is a parallel information base. So we have the, um, in, in the sensation method, we would say we have level one, we have the name of the disease, and then we have level two, which are the facts. And then we have level three, which are the emotions, and four, which are the delusions, and five is the sensation. But in level, um, sometimes they, these level informations, they go simultaneously because we get always this energetic input here from our body language and everything. But also we have, of course, the modalities. So I'm trying to confirm that as good as possible, the, the modalities. And I'm bringing her back and say, can you tell me more about these complaints and your breasts? Because this is our starting point. Otherwise we get lost. We, someone who's perfectionist, someone who's animated, someone who likes to work hard, could be lots of remedies. But that will be interesting for us in confirmation later on. So she says, it feels like having a fiery stick in my breasts. A fiery stick in my breast. Yeah. Again, she talks about a massacre. She talks about a fiery stick. A tremendous burning and itching. Like after a burn. Like thousand needle stitches. So and then your fantasy comes and what could that be? If anything touches the skin, it feels like a blade, a terrible tearing sensation, horrible pain. Anything touches the skin. Yeah? Warmth and a hot shower can help, but only for a short time. So warmth help, hot shower helps. And then she says again, something where she said, it fully attacked me in the weakest situation. So as something like, a, it's almost like you get a picture of a fight, you get something attacking her, you get uh, something extremely burning you see pictures of a blade of yeah some some really strong pictures she's showing us okay so that 
if we have to get to a remedy in acute conditions, of course, I try to be as minimalistic as possible. So I'm trying to use just local symptoms, modalities, and see what is running through. And in this case, uh, I was just looking for the uh, repertories. I, I, those who know me, I, I like to use not too many rubrics, ideally three or four and not 10 or 15, because otherwise we overpronounce certain remedies. But if I just <clears throat> go for these three, which is like um, this burning pain in her mame, in her breast, and there is this itching, tickling in the breast and also on the, on the nipples. Plus, we have it must the remedy must have to do with with fissures, yeah, something cracks. Okay, so and then we look at the remedies and we have from the totality it goes down here to pulsatilla because you see here from HEPA south on we have the first gaps which are not having this uh, which are not so well known for cracks yeah senicum album and HEPA south but those remedies from conium down to pulsatilla are all somehow interesting yeah and this for me <clears throat> is of course the point where I get into, and this is where your knowledge about uh, remedies is so important. So if we look at it, we can say, okay, from the broad uh, approach, we can say by colors, we have two plants, three minerals, one animal, another animal, two animals, we have another plant. So we have five, six <coughs> minerals, we have, five plants and two animals. For this particular um, story, it's actually not a plant, agaricus, we know it's a fungi, it's a mushroom and it has its own kingdom somehow. From this, uh, I, was, I was just thinking of, okay, because that is the other part from experience when you see more those desperate cases, especially when it's about the nipples um, and, and strong symptoms around the nipples, cracks and really severe pain. You know from experience, uh, you have seen cases, but this in combination to her mentality and everything, this hard working was really striking me. And it's difficult to do that uh, in a presentation because now I could say, go to the to the whiteboard and we can write down remedies or you could make suggestions, uh, suggestions, but of course this is not possible. So I just carry on here in my presentation. And what is my uh, prescription? It's coming from a horse, yeah? It's coming from um, the horse and it's called Castor Equi. You see, it was here, one of the remedy uh, the remedies from the animal kingdom. We have sepia, sepia as a mollusk, sepia as a remedy from the first keyword about a mollusk must be protection. I have to protect myself. I'm in danger. I have to retreat. I have to go back. I have to be in a safe place. I can't go out. I have to protect myself. But if you look at a Horse in general, because this remedy castor equi, and we have of course more substances um, related to the horse. We have the main remedy, which is which has been proven by uh, Nancy Herrick, is uh, lac equinum, and we know from lac equinum also there is this certain strength, and we have to work hard. We have to we have to really go there is this um, also perfectionism this is these are issues which are also connected to the, the particular to the horse and um, if even if you would say oh it's enough for me to to combine the rubrics and castor equi is such a good remedy for it anyway um, of course you can give it but for me the most striking thing 
here was that it fits so well to that lady. And okay, I gave that remedy. And let me tell you a little bit about the substance. I don't know how you, well you know Castro Equi. I would say for <clears throat> midwifery, for working with breastfeeding women, this should be one of your polycrests. A polycrest, by, defi by definition, is a remedy which is often prescribed and we should know well. Yeah? Polycrests generally in chronic treatments are sulfur, calcarea, carp, silica, whatever, but castor equi is a polycrest for the nipples. Yeah? So this is a, a small, flat, oblong, oval, horny callus wrinkled on surface, breaking off in scales darker than the hoof and growing on the inner side of the legs above the fetlock of the horse. When rubbed between the fingers, the wart feels quite oily. The growth of epithelial tissue is seen as a remnant of a toe, which in the millions of years of evolution of the horse, from distant ancestors such as Equus cavallus, and the earliest type of horse-like creatures, um, Hier Hiera Coterium from the early uh, Eocene period, has become more and more rudimentary. So some intelligent, um, uh, um, with a lot of, uh, um, uh, or some visionary homeopaths considered in Herring, he got the idea to prove this substance yeah, and introduce it to, to homeopathy. And Herring and indeed others assumed that the growth of uh, was a rudimentary thumbnail. This is very improbable since the ancestor of the horse, so this is typical Franz Vermeulen, he gives it a clear idea, um, had four dissimilar toes on the forefoot. Moreover, the horse has similar growth on the inside of the front knee and at the tarsal joint. So they thought it was a toe, but there is something growing. If you look at the the front legs of a horse, you would see it somewhere. It's like a warty place. Um, and this is what they used. A layer can easily be scrapped from the horny skin growth. When rubbed, it emits an unusual sickly sweet odor comparable to, the, to that of musk or castoreum. Interesting eh? that it smells a bit like musk. The name castor equi is probably derived from this source since castor is Greek for beaver and equi means from the horse. So a beaver-like smell from the horse. This is where the name comes from. Okay, in newly born uh, falls, uh, some fully grown horses, the warts often discharge an odorous fluid. This might indicate that the wart was originally a gland. Other horse-like creatures, such as deer, still have such glands. For horses living in the wild, the secretion's function was probably important for the survival of the species. This, uh, this function became superfluous, however, when the horse became domesticated. This is anyway domestication also, when you look at the proving of lac equinum, a very, very big topic. There is something wild, something underneath. And this is what I could see when I, I also shared the video and the case here in my, my supervision group. And they observed a lot of things and they said, yeah, this sensation of a burning eye, in, burning eye and something a burning blade goes into your skin i mean what is this uh, when we go to the wild west to america the horses and the cows they get this um, brand marks yeah the label yeah and this might be also somehow in the proving experimental evidence and proving show that this horny growth in uh, is found particular in protuberances such as warts, nails, coccyx, and nipples. Indeed, in German, nipples are called Brustwarzen, breast warts, which means, yeah, like a wart. Okay, so this is a bit of background information. And now uh, Herring uh, writes about, uh, in the guiding symptoms, exactly, listen, remember what the case was about, what 
happens when the woman stops uh, this antimucotic remedy she took the medicine then she had this intense uh, sensation and it is like this cracked sore nipples in nursing woman excessively tender cannot be a touch of clothing even in neglected cases where nipple is nearly ulcerated off and only hangs by small strings so this is terrible yeah swelling of both mammary glands especially right they are painful to touch mostly left painful to touch she also had violent internal itching this is so important the itching in the breasts in a text striving to despair rubbing and scratching better but make the skin rough the areola are reddened for some distance around the nipples which are painful and drier than usual swollen mummy are very painful and descending stairs on descending stairs sensation as though they would fall off he was compelled to press against them he i would say uh, i would more say she was compelled to press against them with his hands to ameliorate this disagreeable sensation the areola became red as in erysipelas and also the nipples very painful on the left breast so you find a lot of severe uh, issues but let's see how the remedy works i gave it i started with a 30 c c30 and later on i went to the 1m so after a few days can i see this um no i can't move that sorry some parts i can't see on my presentation but it doesn't matter how did you react she said it was very interesting after seeing you i've tried to stop the allopathic medication but fungus was uh, already trying to come back next morning i took your remedy and i could feel already something is changing it's not getting as bad as before when i try to stop the antimicrotic medicine the next day the symptoms symptoms were gone and i was really surprised i covered it a bit but you see her baby smiling to me and you can see her face and she was very happy to be also on the video so how else what else did you observe then there was stagnation and and then i did as you told me i diluted the remedy in water and had a few sips over the next days after that it was gone it was gone completely can you imagine i felt so relieved yeah she said it was gone so after one week there was a slight relapse and i've repeated the remedy and the symptoms disappeared again i thought i had to stop breastfeeding but that works without any problems now everything is gone i'm i'm really flashed yeah and she was totally happy to be on the video um the follow up and I asked her, did you notice anything else? And she says, I was more relaxed. Even that was better. Each time I took the remedy, I felt more relaxed. Even my husband noticed that I was less tensed. So of course, less pain, less inflammation, but also less stress and less tension. Yeah. So that was great for me to see that even on that level, there's improvement. Okay, I'm quick because I have a lot to share and I want to use um, the second uh, case to get into that topic or to stay in that topic and see the different energetic level in comparison because what we could learn so far from the horse energy for me is, and of course if we use Castor Equi, which is just made from this tiny thing between the legs, we also, uh, if we prove that, we also prove the horse. Yeah? So the horse story must be in that. If you look at the proving so far we had, because there were only small provings and there were only small observation of Castor Equi, there is not so much to find about the mind. But for me, from my understanding of systematic understanding of remedies of animal kingdom of this the keywords we get to a remedy like that working hard um, uh, to be completely a perfectionist but also this attacking massacre 
blade burning all that or something attacked her yeah? okay so we clear our workspace and we go to a second case and see what what we have to share here this is a much older case but i i put it together with the next one because it's all about abscess now abscess as a acute condition so this lady uh, she was 39 and uh, she was breastfeeding and she had already problems for a couple of weeks and her midwife she treated her with certain remedies so but just a general background some women develop a breast abscess while breastfeeding called a lact lactational breast abscess and abscess is a collection of infected fluid now with within the breast tissue the aim of treatment is to cure the abscess quickly and effectively ensuring maximum benefit to the mother with minimal interruption of breastfeeding presently lact lactational breast abscesses are treated treated by incision and that was in this case already on the edge that they wanted to cut it open but she was somehow afraid and also resisting no i don't want that yeah or they do a drainage or needle aspiration to to get rid of it antibiotics may or may not prescribed this woman had she had different homeopathic remedies she had um she had antibiotics already taken but still the same okay for incision and drainage i won't go through all that here's just the process how it gets done and barbara as far as i know the pdf will be available afterwards anyway right mm -hmm. okay so i won't go through that but this is just a process and you can also i i gave you the the link here where you can find it so but we stay with the case when the woman visited visited me with her daughter for the first time she made an extremely pale and weakened impression so in in the opposite to that animated woman before she was very she didn't use many words so it's a very short case she gave only a few information but what i could observe was paleness weakness yeah? the mother uh, the, she was still breastfeeding and her daughter is by now three months and she had taken phytolaca silica pepper salve and she got all that from her midwife in a short i don't know how much time it was in between but she took all these remedies so it began with a small crack uh, crack uh, in my left nipple i produce a lot of milk the pain is sometimes stronger sometimes weaker for example if i lie down and turn to the affected side i feel it very clearly but it's also pulling when I'm lifting things. So we get some modalities here. There's a feeling of pressure or pulling from the abscess to the inside. Cold is rather pleasant. The abscess is lo located in the lower part of the left breast. And after breastfeeding, I sometimes have a pull right up into my back. So and by that time, I mean, this case is many years ago, I was more tended to get something out of these modalities and I got somehow stuck with this pulling backwards, this pulling into her back because you will see the first remedy I gave has that as a strong um, modality, but the first remedy failed and you will see. So I asked her about giving birth, how was it to give birth? And uh, she said, quick and without any complaints, I felt good. So I didn't get any further, any deeper information. Digestion fine, nothing. Yeah. So my first prescription, we, it was a severe abscess, difficult to treat before. The woman had even some antibiotics and in the meantime, uh, in the meantime but without any improvement the gynecologist would like to do an incision now but she would like to prevent and there was somehow this she was a bit of she didn't say much she looked pale she had really sweaty cold hands 
and she was somehow resisting. Yeah? But by that time, I was just following um, my you know, the repertory and see what, what comes up. And um, my first prescription by that time, because I thought this is a good and striking sy symptom, but it wasn't that striking. In retrospective, the most striking thing is much more from my today understanding the, the weakness and the, 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 the sweaty hands. So because of this pulling sensation, which radiates into the back, I gave her the remedy here on number two, which is croton tiglium, yeah, which is coming from the euphobia family. And of course, because she had phytolacca silica already and it failed, so I gave that. Um, in Kent's lecture, it says about uh, Croton Tiglium, it has another manifestation that you want to carry in mind, a group of symptoms in relation to lactation. After confinement, the mother may go on a little uh, while with all things following normally, but all at once she commands uh, to have pain in one or the other mammary gland and the drawing as with a string comes back or comes up. It feels to her as if a string were attached behind the nipple, pulling backwards a sharp drawing stinging pain that will in some instances keep her walking the floor night and day. So this is typical for euphobia, uh, especially coton tiglium. It's, it's a pulling sensation from the nipple inside. A lot of milk, but it can't come out. So and this is hide and hidden, as is typical for euphobia. But I, I saw that as a symptom, but it didn't work. Anyway, to, to know the remedy, because it can be a powerful remedy when it's really striking that symptoms, I gave it successfully, belongs to the euphobia family. Um, so the English name for it is uh, Tiglium uh, seeds or yeah, the seeds from, from uh, it's Euphobia, Spurge family and belongs to the Rosets. So mostly they are also quick to act and they want to get out of something, but they feel trapped. And this wasn't in the case. That wasn't by that time. This case is very old, my understanding. So usually the sensation in the euphobia family is bound and unbound there is something tight and no, it's too tight and the passiveness is uh, it's tied up and you cannot do anything about it and the active part is you want to be free you want to break free so they're more active and restless which that woman wasn't at all so the compensation state and sensation method about the euphobia is to be free unbound and not tied down. Okay, so here just listed, but you see that in the presentation later, is that crotontiglium is in the acute miasm. So they must be even more desperate and restless and walking around and trying to get out of the tightness, which unfortunately we haven't seen. But anyway, this is how we see the remedies in this um, family we're using. The miasms, there's also Hura brasiliensis, there's Melilo mercurialis perennis, yeah, which is um, growing our forests here. Anyway, I won't go deeper in this. I want to stay with the case. So the abscess is now, after eight days, still, uh, it's, it's got even worse. There's a visible discoloration now. Her pain is increased, and there's a pain as soon as she lifts uh, up the bra or when she walks around. Three days ago, I also had a slight fever and another milk stasis. So that was not good. Overall, the reactions um, made me rather doubtful. In addition, the striking paleness persists and the weak handshake of a damp, sweaty hand also has intensified. So this brings up the topic of we could, um, no, as in the beginning, the patient is not very detailed in her statements. They are rather short but precise. 
and she still does not want any external inter intervention. So what to do? And this is something uh, from theory I like to bring in. It's again the organon where we could call it the one-sided diseases. Yeah? Because from aphorism 173 to 183, uh, Hahnemann is talking about the one-sided diseases. That means <clears throat> you have a, a problem, but you, you get not the right picture, even if you did your best job, yeah? the best observation as possible, but you missed somehow either something or it hasn't been, you couldn't get it out. And this is what he called the one-sided diseases. And in this, uh, if you, to make it short, we can say, if you give the wrong remedy, the better one will come more present. So a, a false remedy, a wrong prescription, brings out the better one in a clearer way. This is what he also says in these aphorisms. I won't go through them all. I just want you to be reminded to the organon from 173 to 183. They're all in between about the one-sided diseases. So what I've done, even if she had that remedy before, I went back to silica because for me, this like I, there is something hidden inside. It wants to come out, but she is very pale. She's very weak and she can't somehow get rid of it. She also doesn't say, I'm so desperate, I'm going to have surgery because she is even afraid of that. And we know from silica, fear of needles, fear of injections, fear of this to when someone wants to break in and they're trying to resist as long as possible, but they get weaker and weaker. So I thought I'm going back to silica once a day. And it was fantastic because ne, already after three days, two chicken egg sized bumps uh, appeared and uh, bluish discoloration came up. In the beginning, when she rang me, I was okay. Ooh, does that go all in the right direction here? But the midwife, and this is important in this, uh, when you were close with the midwife, she said, no, it looks all okay. We on the right track and I'm going to see her every day to, to give her bandages because from this on, uh, an abscess of three centimeters in diameter has opened up with only slight pressure. A lot of pus was released. Her midwife uh, accompanied the process daily and bandaged the wound. Over the whole time, the woman could continue to breastfeed. She continued taking the LM potency for another three and a half weeks. We spoke maybe once a week, twice a week. I wanted to just get a report. And it was doing completely well without a surgery. And the power, you know, the power of also homeopathy in these cases i have a when of course in between if you i mean i don't know how long that is ago 15 years you get somehow insecure and you think oh god will that go well because we have modern medicine we have antibiotics we have surgery we have incision it can be so quickly fixed but it can also work with homeopathy yeah and this woman she wanted it she she went through it and it was fantastic. And if you go back or you see someone is reserved, abrupt, but not in a bad way, it just doesn't give you more, lots of information. This is often an indication for silica, for me, for my understanding, or general minerals and stones, but especially stones. So this all is a bit of an... Uh, introduction to my last case for today which is not that long ago but it was very impressive also from the result and i like to share that with you and um, to see what was obvious here okay so i call this case breaking up old structures and there was a woman 60 years old and you can see here quite clearly she came with an abscess it was a huge um, um, swelling here. It was completely red, 
completely red and inflamed around. It was very sore, it was sore to touch, and she said, I have already a paper to go to the, um, to, to have a surgery, to, they want to make it, they want to open it up because the doctor said there's no way to, to change that. And this woman said, no, I don't want that. I want to try homeopathy. And I thought, okay, give it a few days maybe and see what, if we have a chance to do something. So, general information. And this was interesting because, and I also have her on, 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 on video, and now she's, a, she's fantastic. She's a big fan of homeopathy because you will see what happened. Um, she was 60 years old by that, and uh, when we made the appointment, and the abscess on her right shoulder, no, it's bright red and painful. From They wanted to do surgery, blah, 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 but something in her is resisting, and the patient wants to give homeopathy a chance first. Okay. During the acute treatment, I see a bright red abscess that hurts when touched, cold applications does the patient good. Pressure on her clothes, especially have a coat, it was winter time, is very uncomfortable. The development began two years earlier with a harmless pimple, which then, so it's already two years that that thing was there, but the acute peak part is, is very fresh which then slowly grew bigger and bigger and now matured into a painful condition. It was also interesting that in the prehistory there was already a large abscess formation on her back years ago. So somehow she has these tendencies. And also that was the other physical main thing I could find in her history when she was four years old, she had a burst appendix um, which she remembered as very traumatic. So, when I asked her about other complaints, the patient reported digestive disorders and she reacts to sugar and white flour, anything that is not 100% natural. And she, so I just picked out those, for me, striking key sentences, and we will see how much that has to do with the remedy and her story. Because she said it must be clear and 100% nature, yeah? which can, that can also be arsenicum album. It depends what the story is behind it, because arsenicum album needs to have 100% nature, because otherwise it could be contaminated, poisoned, blah, blah, blah. but that's not the story. We just follow, <coughs> we just perceive and see what she's telling us. Then she says, my stool gets then affected, and she said, my digestive fire is not as strong. So then I ask her, say, what is, was that, that, what does that mean? Tell me about your digestive fire. I'm in the midst of a great, pro, uh, of a, of a great process of change, a process from old to new. I have lived too long in old structures, but wanted to leave them leave old structures towards the fire and then i mean i love that because we always have to imagine what is the patient what is she talking about here when she talks about old structures or when she talks about leaving something but on my strengths on my own strengths there was no fire anymore i was stuck and had to get help from outside I feel powerless and don't want to stay inside, but I can't do it on my own. And she's crying all the time. So when she's telling all that, we can see already at that time, it must be something mineral related because there is something is stuck and it's missing inside. I feel powerless. Yeah? And I, won't, I don't want to stay inside, but I can't do it on my own to get out. Yeah. So no fire. Yeah. And a process of change from old to new. 
So it must be somehow of old structures, a long process, something slow towards the fire. I cannot enter into the powerful joy. There is no flow. So and when we try to imagine what is she telling us here, I cannot enter into the power. There is no flow. I want to be alive. I want to be pure. I want to be creative, just living joy. I want to let the wild out, but I'm too afraid to do so. Hold it back. Sankaran recently introduced us in Munich to what he calls superclasses. So for those who are uh, in it, we know also in my teaching in, uh, in South Africa, where I've taught that a lot, the conquests subclasses in the plant kingdom. We know there are six subclasses and they are very, um, yeah, they have a very clear structure related to the evolutional theme, but also to the way um, the plants or the evolutional process shows us. And what um, I will just hold that up for you for a second, because you might see it somewhere at uh, Sankaran's teachings um, in future. But when I, when I hold it up here, it's about those, the sensations yeah, in, the, in the subclasses. Because what he did is he made a table and he put all the sensations now in those subclasses. And the interesting thing about the superclasses is that we now uh, can compare let's say um, the first subclass where we have the magnolids and we can compare them to a superclass in a different kingdom that means we might see the first and second row of the um, periodic table have very similar appearance to the first row or the subclass one the magnolids in the plant kingdom this is a work we find similarities in uh, Mikhail Yakir, in the work of um, um, Mahesh Gandhi, and also the Yoshis, they're all on this somehow, but Rajan, of course, he, he likes to bring something new, that is what, very important, yeah, that it comes, and he likes to go through it, and he did it very beautifully. And these sub, uh, superclasses, we can say here, we have this, uh, we could say from the superclass, we have a relation to the mollusks, of course, from the animal kingdom, because something can't come out. Yeah, I'm too afraid to bring it out. But from the mineral kingdom, we can compare, compare these, um, um, these superclasses. So, but to keep it simple, I'm coming back to our case, otherwise we might get confused. Um, but I just want to mention it for those who are on it and, and try to go deeper, because this would be a topic I'm happy to share in the future, because these superclasses and comparing classes is fantastic, because we learn so much. So what are you holding back? I don't think I've ever lived myself. So something is not coming out. That could also be like, uh, first or second row on a periodic table, no? or even the third row, but it's very much holding back. Why don't I allow myself to be who I am? There is a severity that uh, holds me back. I'm conformist, rigid, trapped, like in a knight's armor. She feels trapped, cold, hard, and immobile. And try to... Uh, remember, this is all about a case um, where we want to treat an acute abscess. And I found this so interesting because that came all up after a few minutes when she was going into the sensation of her abscess. Yeah. So, what else do we get? Now, at the local level, it, um, or this is already my analysis about the case because I want to share a bit more about the remedy. It's about abscesses and trapped. Um, wait a bit. 
to close this. Uh, this finds no way out and should be surgically, uh, surgically open. The dynamics of something that wants to come out runs like a red thread through the central themes of the patient. She wants to leave old structures. She's stuck, there is no flow, something is trapped. She does not come into the power, into the joy. So. Now the question is, when we have these superclasses, we have comparisons, but is it a plant, plant, planet, that should be a plant on the top there, animal or mineral? The problem in the minerals lies in her. She misses the fire, the power, the joy, so it must be a mineral. There are issues of lack, lack of everything. Yeah? So we are in the mineral kingdom. But the question is, of course, which mineral? So, and for me, here comes into place the sensation of stones and um, those friends from South Africa, they will also know already what will come now, which remedy, which is turned into one of my favorite ones. And it's good to have Barbara here because we will learn and hear a little bit more about it now. So, the central theme of the patient touches very clearly the vital sensation of stones in general. It means, first of all, it's a mineral kingdom. The problem lies in me. Order, structure is an issue. But on the sensation level, it's about breaking, hiding and being trapped. So, and here maybe this could be um, this could be mixed up with a mollusk, yeah, because hiding and being trapped could be a sensation of a mollusk. Could be sepia, could be octopus, could be murex, whatever. There is deep sadness in many of these stone remedies, withdrawing inner and outer slowness. So this is typical for stones, the slowness. She said, I'm in a process of of change, old structures to new structures, but that takes her uh, 20, 30 years. Yeah? And also the abscess, if we look at it, it started two years ago and it's ripe after two years to break up. Yeah? So and the active reaction is sublimity, anger breaking up. Okay, so I went into the repertory and I looked in the rubric uh, painful abscess and there we have, uh, we see minerals no? and one of them is silica, the rock crystal, which I showed you the case before. Similarity to silica is also this resistance and holding back. I want to solve it, but I can't somehow. And when we look at the remedies here, of course, we see silica from the mineral kingdom um, that is the rubric 30 remedies in it and of course lots of other powerful uh, abscess remedies which is pyrogenium for example which is that's actually rotten meat yeah pyrogenium pyro from the fire also tarantula cubensis but then we have a restlessness, yeah, we have animal, we have spider energy, yeah, we have bellis, we have uh, bellis perennis can have an abscess, but what must be the causation? Trauma, yeah, something hard pushes me and then maybe a breast tumor from always kicking, yeah, carbo animalis, carbo vegetabilis, and so on, yeah, crocus, so I was interested in the silica, of course, but I've chosen the amethyst. And that was my first experience with the amethyst in such a severe acute condition. And uh, I've shared many cases of children where I've given it successfully since, I know the remedy exactly since 12 years, right, Barbara? Yeah, more, more than yeah. 12 years. Yeah, Anton, yeah. I think Anton 2002 or something like this. Yes, yeah. So interesting about the amethyst is um, that 
it's actually a remedy, like a complex remedy, because rather other than uh, silica, we have aluminium, ferrum, calcium, magnesium, lithium, and natrium. Natrium brings somehow even more holding back or grief. Lithium is even more holding back my real identity. And alumina as well, it's all identity. Yeah? And ferrum is a bit more like the iron is uh, force raw, is more like uh, really, they can be really forceful and hard with what they want to uh, achieve. They defend it much more than silica itself. Silica is very yielding on one hand. Security issue of calcium, magnesium, struggle, separation. Okay, so I gave the amethyst and I wanted to tell you about the follow-up before I tell you the story when I first heard about the remedy and I'm so happy to share it with Barbara and the School of Colorado because this was my the gift I took home from our seminar in, in, in Boulder uh, was to hear about this proving. Yeah? So at first I noticed eight days after that my life force was back. And I thought, geez, that's quick. Huh? After one day or one night, I got up the next morning with more strength and wrote a long email and sent it off. Something that had been on my mind for weeks. There was a contact, but it did not go any further. So she was in somehow in, stuck with a woman. She wanted to email, but she didn't. And she, there was no flow. It stagnated. But now I, I thought I just had to react. Afterwards, I went into the shower. That was the next morning. I went into the shower and it started to run the pus from the abscess in one night. Yeah. So, and then from then on, a lot of yellow secretion emptied from the abscess. I was able to squeeze out some of the fluid, cleaned and bandaged freshly every day. Now only little secretion comes out. I was really powerless um, and had stopped with yoga before. Suddenly I felt I can restart again and do my exercises. And she was great because I invited her. This is, I didn't have the, the first interview on video, but I have it on, on the follow-up. And this is so great because she said, of course, uh, when it works so well, they're happy to, to share it. The inflammation is out now. The pain and the swelling have completely disappeared. I'm so happy and really impressed how quickly the abscess opened after the remedy. She was completely happy. Yeah? And I was completely surprised because I thought, geez, that thing is yeah, so big and so ripe, but also ooh, it looked so threatening. Opened up. What else? It rolls straight now, it flows. I'm full of energy and action. So much has happened within the week, even on the outside. Thank you so much for the powerful remedy. So until today, I'm in contact with the patient. The abscess is long gone and time will tell us if it will reoccur. Uh, I was impressed by the speed and deep healing effect of the amethyst on all levels. And anyway, it's for me so great to hear you see the photo, how it looked after eight days. Yeah. It's just a tiny bit, there's a tiny redness, but you can see it clearly. It's not, you can compare it. It doesn't even when the plaster is on release any pus or anything, and it was it was just gone. Yeah. Eight days after amethyst. So Maybe before um, Barbara, uh, or you want me to quickly tell that story about how yes, I... Yes, your own story. I, my own story, okay. So my own story about the amethyst. My first encounter was when I was uh, yeah, 12 years or 13 years ago, together with Anne Shadda, I gave a seminar in Barbara's school in Colorado. 2002, 18 years ago. Oh, no, that can't be because huh? Anton was just born. He's turning oh, okay. 30. 
he's turning 13 this year so can't be yeah anyway uh, i gave a seminar for children um uh, with anna and during a nice dinner with um with barbara and Bill, with, we exchanged our experiences with uh new about new provings and in this context barbara reported about the amethyst proving and um, she also emphasized its mythological connection to wine, to Vitis, which made me sit up and take notice because we were just sharing a glass of wine, I guess. And she was talking about uh, the background of the amethyst because the story is uh, when you fix or you put uh, the, the crystal, the amethyst into the wine, uh, you can stay clear, you won't be intoxicated. So, and by that time, I had worked hard on my homeopathic proving of Vitis vinifera, which is wine, which is wine the wine grape, and, um, or the grape wine, and just published it. So, okay, so the, the, even the origin of the name Amethystos, which means uh, in not to be intoxicated, already contains clear indications of the connection of the violet mineral to red wine from which the gemstone is said to get its color. Now, Barbara's report of the proving fascinated me so much and I wanted to understand on a deeper level what the healing effect of the amethyst would be. So what did I do? There wasn't that much clinical experience so I ordered it from Helios uh, according to the motto of Hahnemann what you can observe in yourself no, is the most excellent uh, and I decided to order it and take it. So I took the 30C on three consecutive days and already during the third day I developed an unbelievable painful nail bed inflammation, a panericium, around my big toe on the right side which I have never seen before. Uh, I, had, I had no issues about that. The nail bed was discolored bluish violet and I could soon see the enclosed pus shimmering through. This condition, painful condition, which was uh, accompanied by trapped tissue, remained me for several days. I did not want to interrupt because I'm a homeopath, I have to suffer, I have to see how it works. Uh, I did not want to interfere with hepasal or something, so I continued to observe. And with the help of the foot bath and ointment, the tissue then slowly opened up and the pus could drain. And that was my first experience on my own with this story. So I wanted to understand the amethyst and I got a gift and overnight I had my experience to break up old patterns. Yeah. And this is exactly what I could see in the case at that time. I was not aware of the extent to which the subjects of being trapped and trapped you know, of water, tissue, excretions and everything are related to the stones and not only on a local level, but also on a general level. With great respect after this experience, I put my medicine bottles back in the cupboard and till the first real amethyst um, case came and that was so such an amazing story for me. And since then, I've ordered even new bottles from Helios because they were all empty. I, I give it in children with development issues because breaking things open, since my own te test, I have prescribed on my own proving, um, but testing it on my own, the amethyst many times. It is a stone with, with, with which it is possible to break things open and set development in motion. The amethyst has also proved to be very effective in children with development delays because this is a similar story. It helps to come into life, to break open. It's like leaving the bubble or something, yeah, to come into life. Okay, and as we have Barbara here, maybe can you tell us a few words about the background, how big that proving was or what your observation was, Barbara? Yes, so this was the first proving that the school did. And uh, to get 
I didn't really know which, what remedy, what we should go for. So I called John Morgan at Helios Pharmacy and he said, we have some information on amethyst, but we could use a lot more. So because there's a lot of mythological information that you can find uh, if you research it a bit. And this was kind of at the beginning of the internet, but um, so John Morgan sent us the remedy and we had 6C, 30C, 200C, 1M, and they were all used. And we started out with 47 provers, which I do think is one of the maybe largest provings done in the country here. And mm -hmm. we then narrowed down the reports and uh, ended up with 29 uh, very reliable prover reports. And this was done over a period of quite a few years, like from, uh, we started in 1996 and we finished in 2001 and did it with different groups of provers because uh, I wanted to see or make sure that we just didn't work with the group that was in class together. So these were unrelated people and it was very amazing. And the connection, so you can go to the homeopathyschool.org website to the resource page and, you, and look at the uh, research that we've done and you'll find a very large proving report. I think it's like 32 pages and that's the extraction of all this humongous information that we actually had. So um, the connection between the amethyst with the amethyst and the wine, because Jürgen said they were drinking wine and he had done a proving of wine, and I'm talking about amethyst. And the connection is that Artemis, which was the divine huntress in the Greek mythologies, and she, um, she was a protector of women and, um, and, and the goddess of wild animals and hunting. And sometimes when these women were connected to husbands they didn't want to marry, they would flee and Artemis would change them into an animal or into, or into a stone or a plant so that they could get away from having to be married. So you may know uh, the, the god Dionysus who was, you know, or Bacchus in the Roman times, he was called Bacchus. And he's the one that was the god of wine. And wine is a substance that can heal or destroy so it was actually used as medicine. But then um, Dionysus had these raging parties and he would get young women in there. And he was after, after this young woman who then um, fled to, to get away from him and was turned by Artemis into a crystal pure crystal white rock. And he was uh, trying to get to her and he couldn't. And he got very mad and he had a glass of wine in his hand and he spilled it on this pure white rock and it turned into this purple rock, which is amethyst. So here you have the connection between the rock okay. and the wine. And that's mm -hmm. what Jürgen and I experienced when we sat in Boulder after the seminar and had dinner. Mm -hmm. Great. But it's also a lovely, thank you, Barbara, and it's also a nice bridge to the case because as you could see in this woman, there is so much potential in her, but it's somehow trapped and she can't get, she can't bring it out. She can't get it, to, the fire out. She can't get it into life. And when we give these remedies, it's somehow like, a, um, it helps to induce birth somehow, yeah, because it helps to, to come out and to live your life, your true potential. Yeah. So, and this is for me one, uh, the, the clarity of course is one part, but mainly it's like this breaking up, this coming out and going into life. Yeah. And I've seen that in children. It's so wonderful when they, they struggle to, to learn talking, to walking, to, to everything. They are almost like in the gemstone hidden. Yeah, they can't come out. And that is a, such a good remedy for it. Well, that's very much the theme of the minerals, right? Because they are hidden away in the mountains and they have to, you have to break open places to get them out, right? Yeah. 
But as you said, and as you gave us from the mythology, we should not underestimate the amount of life in crystals. We always think in an animal itself or in a, in a plant, there is so much more life, but it's not true. It's just what we can't see it. But there is an enormous life hidden inside the gem. Yeah. It's the same with diamonds. I mean, look at all the potential inside the diamond or when we have the diamond. Yeah. There's so much energy in it, so much power. We just have to somehow find a way to release it or to, to let it flow. Yeah. Anyway, um, are there any other questions or are you happy with those cases or do you have a question to, to one of the things I was sharing because was it far too quick or what is your feeling, Barbara, about it? Uh, was well, let's see fast? if anybody has any questions. Yeah. I see some kind of messages here from the chat, but I can't open them. Maybe I, when I escape my presentation here. Um, anyway, before... I will hand this course. over to the technology department. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there anyone who wants to ask me something or wants to tell something or share an experience with the amethyst maybe or with a Casto Equi? It's lovely to see you, Wayne. <laughs> Fantastic. Maybe we need to unmute you. Um, Give me a minute here and I'll unmute everyone okay you should be able to ask questions now okay so everybody is hopla everybody is unmuted are you all happy <laughs> yes thank you i have a question yes um i put it in the chat but i guess i'll ask again in the second case why did you start with silica lm6 instead of lm1 uh, because this is just based on uh, experience that I never, I mean, it's not true. Sometimes when, when there is a real delicate, very delicate uh, uh, case where I don't want to cause any aggravation, then I'm, I've chosen in the past a few times uh, uh, LM1 or a Q1, which is similar a term for it, depending on the uh, company who produces it. But LM6 from experience is a good uh, potency to start from. And then I often step to LM9, 12, 15, 18, I go these steps. Yeah. But totally possible that an LM1 would have done it as, uh, the same. I mean, if we go to uh, to the potency recommendations in the sensation method, for example, there is no real recommendation for the LM potency. It's mostly for the C potencies. And uh, there you would say you go much higher, as yes. clearer the, the, the picture is. But with LM, in those cases, uh, I, I, can, I can recommend without any trouble to say, okay, LM6 is good to start with. Thank okay. You. All right. Any other questions? Hello. Would you share more on amethyst and the developmental delay in children? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, I did that before. I, of course, I would have to, to pull up a case. Um, what I shared before, which is very clear in my mind, is a case of twins, a girl, where she had from... So she had a hemorrhage uh, in her brain and they didn't really observe live that. Zoom, Sorry? So live Zoom session. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about something else. Okay, so um, this, this girl, she had a hemorrhage and then they found later on that this, because she didn't really develop in comparison to her sister, 
uh, twins and they found out that there were some cysts in her brain. And um, no, here yeah, everybody. Uh, so there were some cysts. Yeah, there were cysts in her brain and she couldn't really walk. She couldn't really talk. She was stumbling and they were really concerned about her. And this girl I also gave amethyst and she did so well. And one uh, major comparison or observation, because sometimes you think, oh, is it more silica? Is it more amethyst? Mainly all my cases I've seen, they tend to be warmish. So you ask for temperature, they, uh, the children are not very chilly. They don't necessarily have these cold, sweaty feet like silica itself has. Maybe because of the iron, maybe because of the magnesium, they are much warmer. So this is for me one major comparison. And what I've seen as well, they, they much, because of the iron inside the amethyst, they more forceful, they more uh, obstinate children. With You can't not easily convince them to something else. If you have an opinion, you want to convince them, mm -mm, they react. So in silica is often, they are resistant, but more yielding, much more yielding. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that was great. We nearly, I see lots of messages here. Bill, uh, should I open those or can I open those when yes. I click on them? Yeah. Um, because I see something with 18. Oh, yeah, here, okay. I see it now. Oh, yeah, lots to read. That's concentrating on it. Okay, I'll read that question. Does concentrating on animal remedies also have to do with the kingdom idea of these remedies? having to do with hierarchy, protection, relativity, etc. Sure, because when we have an animal, when we think about an animal, we have often a, like a process. We have, as I said, in the mollusks, it's much different. There is a problem with relation. There is a problem with being threatened. They, they need to hide, etc. And if we look at the mammals in general, of course, they like to be um, together in groups. They are struggling to find their place in the group or like luck like equinum. They have to work very hard for the group, for the family and all that. Yeah. So, um, and the, this is, this is also interesting that the mammals in those um, new tables I was sharing um, in the superclasses, the mammals uh, or some of the mammals, the main group of the mammals belong to the rosettes, to those who are fast to move, change, need to get out of a situation. Yeah. So this could be uh, interesting why LM6 that I have answered would good question there's another question here would the foot bath and ointment to be considered as interruption in the amethyst proving of course uh, it could be an interruption but I mean I wanted to make sure I, or let's say it like that I was prepared to suffer but I I had to do something to to get rid of my pain. So, I mean, uh, if you want to try it without ointment and anything, you're welcome to do that. I had to do at least a little bit, and I didn't want to interfere with a homeopathic remedy. So I wanted to see, okay, anyway. Oh, yeah, there's someone else from South Africa, great. Sakshi, um, and uh, good, thank you. Okay, that I did. Someone writes in German, Eva, thank you. Ganz toll, that's uh, 
Fantastic. So great, yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Wonderful. So hope you all stay well and um, especially in these challenging times, according to the definition, we are in this, we, we are already third mo three months in a crisis, COVID-19 crisis. I won't tell you a lot about it, except that I have hardly any cases seen here in Bonn and we, we don't have it a lot. As a, we have a lot of restrictions and that. But we need, to be, we need to be careful because after three months, things turn to go into a chronic disease and that we leave it as there? soon as possible. Yeah? Not to keep Hello? it acute. Could you oh. mute that? Okay, yeah. good. So, all the best. Yeah, Great sister. to see everybody and fantastic to see Thank so you. many friends. Thank okay. you, Jürgen, from all around the world. Thank yes. you. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.